Okay, um, I will be discussing number two and number three. Number one, you can easily answer it if you understood number two and number three. Number four is a little bit challenging, but um, it's doable. Okay, so let's start with number two. A 0 0.05 kilogram ball starts from rest at some height on a toy roller coaster. At a later time, it travels through the top of a loop at 2 meters per second and a height of 0.4 meters. Um, so very first thing that we need to do is draw the situation, what is happening. So at a certain height that we don't know, there is a ball that is at rest. And then it travels through a loop. But we know that the loop is approximately, the height of this loop is approximately 0.4 meters. And at the top of the loop, they said that the velocity is 2 meters per second. Okay, so for letter A, what is the mechanical energy of the ball at the top of the loop? So only think about the top of the loop. When you go around the top of the loop, check. Do you have mechanical? Uh, do you have um, potential energy? Yes, you do have because you have a height. Do you have um, speed? Yes, you do have because you do have. Um, I mean, you do have a speed. Then you do have a kinetic energy. So based from this one, we can easily calculate everything. So the we know that um, UG is equivalent to mgy. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Then, therefore, um, we can just plug in the values. Mechanical energy is 0.5. G is 9.8. And this one is 0.4 for the Y. And we have 1 half. The mass is 0 0.05, not 0.5, sorry. 0 0.05. And then the velocity is 2. Don't forget to square it. So we calculate everything. We're going to get um, 0.296 joules. So that is our mechanical energy. Okay, letter B. If the track is frictionless, what must have been the starting height of the ball? So if it's frictionless, we know that the mechanical energy is conserved. The energy is conserved. It will have the same mechanical energy. So at the starting height, so think about this height. What are the um, energies present? Do we have UG? Yes, we have UG because we have a certain height that we don't know. Do we have KE? No, we do not have KE. Why? Because they said the ball starts from rest. So if it starts from rest, the kinetic energy would be zero. Okay? And using this one, we know that um, the UG is equivalent to MG. Y. And we need to calculate the starting height. We need to calculate the Y. ME never changed, so we're going to use still the same thing, 0.296. The mass is the same, 0 0.05. The G is 9.8. Calculate Y. So if you calculate Y, we're arranging the equation, you should have around 0 0.604 meters. So the height of this one is approximately from the ground is 0 0.604 meters. Okay. Letter C. If friction caused the ball to lose 0 0.15 joules of energy as it traveled the track, what um, new starting height would be required? Okay. So what are we expecting? Are we expecting higher than this one or lower than this one? Of course, it will be higher because um, friction lose the energy, so we need to have uh, more um, energy to um, to go it uh, to to make it like go around the loop. So, with our conservation of energy, we know that mechanical energy initial is equivalent to mechanical energy final. But this time, we have lost of energy, so we need to take to, into account that. Um, loss of energy that is due to friction. So there is work done by the friction. We need to subtract that. Okay. Okay, then going back. Initially, right here, we only have um, UG, right? There's no kinetic energy it's starting from rest. Here, we lose 0.15 joules of energy. 
and then the mechanical energy final right here which is right here um, we still have this mg yn mv uh, one half mv squared and we calculated that one which is um, 0.296 joules so we don't need to to do it again so if we want to calculate for the mgy uh, I mean for the for the y um, we can expand this one which is um, equivalent to mgy and then we can put it on the other side at both sides by 0.15 we have 0.296 plus 0.15 joules okay plug in the values the m is equivalent to 0 0.05 G is equivalent to 9.8 and then we're looking for Y and then if we add this 2 this 2 is equivalent to hold on one second 0.296 it's 0.15 that will be 0.446 and if we solve for Y the Y just solve it we should be getting 0.91 meters and yes it is higher this one is higher than the height when there is no friction okay all right next number two okay does this look familiar it looks like um, Atwood machine right actually there are several ways to answer some problems um, regarding Atwood machine you can use the Newton's law that we discussed before or you can use this energy energy conservation of energy to calculate something okay for this time um, let us see what we need to for the uh, for this uh, problem let's see what we need to calculate the diagram at the right shows the block suspended by a rope over a pulley what is the mechanical energy of the system right after the four kilogram block is released so right after this is released so just like you know just millisecond or nanosecond when you released it okay we know that this is um this is heavier so it will go down okay so let us calculate the mechanical energy check what are the energies present okay since we do have two objects we have this four kilogram object we need to know all the mechanical energy or the, all the energies present here we need to know all the energies present here also okay so let us look at this one so let's assign this one as object one and this one as object two okay so we should um, let's check if we have UG for the first one do we have K for the first one plus do we have U for the second object or do we have K for the second object Okay, let us analyze. Let us look at this one. Right before you release it, right, it has a certain height. So it has more of the potential than the kinetic. It's just starting to move. So we can assume that the kinetic energy would be zero. <coughs> okay, look at the object two right here. It is on the floor. Right before you um, release it, you don't have height right so this one will be zero you don't have kinetic energy as well because it's just starting to move you have a kinetic energy but it's very very small that we can consider negligible okay so it means our mechanical energy is equivalent to the potential energy of this first object which is equivalent to mg y i'll put it labeled as y1 okay then what will be the mass what is the mass of that first object it's four kilograms what will be the G? It's 9.8 meters per second squared. What will be the height? It will be 2 meters. So if you calculate this one, this is equivalent to 78.4 joules. Okay. Next. Letter B. Okay, letter B is um, 
I said um, this is a frictionless system, so the mechanical energy is constant. Okay, so we're assuming we're conserving energy. How fast is the four kilogram block moving just before it hits the table? So this one, before it falls there, what will be the velocity? Okay, so here we can use the law of conservation of energy. Mechanical energy initial should be equivalent to the mechanical energy final. We calculated that the mechanical energy initial is 78.4 joules, right? But how about the final mechanical energy? The same thing as what we did here. Let us analyze. Do we have U for the first object? And let's label it as final because it's the final. Do we have kinetic energy for the first object final? Do we have u for the second object final and then do we have kinetic energy for the second object final okay when this one is released it will go down here right what will happen all the potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy so it means your potential energy would be zero before it hits the ground do we have kinetic energy yes it's still moving and then this one it will go up there it we still have kinetic energy there and it has a certain height so it means we still have also the potential energy there so how are we going to we need to calculate everything we need to calculate the k1f um, u2f and then k2f okay so this one it's a little bit um, um, algebra so let's put this one this k is one half mv squared. I'm putting one final so that I will not get confused. And then this one is well, let's put this one is m one two. This one is um, m g y m two g y final for the second one. And then here will be one half m two v2 final square and let's plug in the values 78.4 joules one half and the mass one is four kilograms we don't know the velocity first one final square that's what we're trying to find and then m2 is three <coughs> G is 9.8 height of Y2 so they will just exchange the height so this one will be 2 meters and then 1 half and then what will be the mass of um, M2 it's also 3 and then we don't know the velocity of the second one final okay but since we have the same speed this one and this one will be the same okay so now let us simplify the equation so this one is 78.4 one half one half times four is two so we can make it v squared I'll just put this as v because um, they are these two are the same and then to calculate this one um, three times 9.8 times 2 is 588 plus what is 1 half um, times 3 that is um, 1.5 v squared and then combine like terms okay oh, sorry this should be 58.8 okay let's combine like terms so we combine this to um, 78.4 minus 58.8 and then 2 v squared plus 1.5 v squared subtract this this will be equivalent to 19.6 and then 2 v squared plus 1.5 v squared is equivalent to 3.5 v squared and we need V, divide both sides by 3.5. Um, let's put it right here. Oops, sorry. 
So our v squared is equivalent 19.6 divided by 3.5 is um, 5.6. And we need v, get the square root of both sides. Square root of 5.6 would be equivalent to 2.37 meters per second. So this is the velocity.